Do you know how many electric cars were sold worldwide just last year? Almost 14 million. The world is changing and people are benefiting in all sorts of ways from switching to electric cars, installing solar panels and battery storage units, heat pumps too. Some folks are miles ahead in the electric evolution race and reaping the benefits while some folks are still barely sprouting legs and seem rather outraged by the quite frankly better, more efficient technology of all things electric. So let's say you have a spark of curiosity about getting your first EV, but where can you go to test drive loads of them? And what about all these horror stories about EVs in the press? Does such a place exist where you can learn all you need and more about embracing an electrified vehicle and home? Yes, I've been to such a place, many times in fact, which we'll get to in a minute. But there's more. I'm going to give you an EV myth-busting gift at the end of this video that's so good, you'll wonder why it's not front page news, as if they'd have anything positive to say about the future. But let's begin here. There are over 1 million EVs on UK roads today. That's a lot of drivers who are gliding about their daily lives with ease, charging at home or using one of the 61,000 public chargers we have available. That's also a million cars driving with zero exhaust emissions and over the past year have received 31.8% of their electricity from wind alone. Just 1.2% of the UK's electricity supply has come from coal. So if you ever run into any BS like this, you know it's scaremongering, deliberate, misinformation lies. And how about this? Over 50% of new car sales in China are EVs, with more than 94 brands offering more than 300 EV models at different price points. China is the largest automobile market worldwide, both in terms of demand and supply. It's fair to say, EVs are here to stay. They just may. Hooray. The number of battery electric vehicles on Norway's roads is on track to overtake petrol cars by the end of this year. That's half of all vehicles in Norway being fully electric. Anyone who thinks this EV malarkey will just blow over and we can go back to burning diesel for the rest of time are greatly mistaken. EVs are becoming cheaper as cost efficiencies in manufacturing continue to improve, battery costs continue to decline, and as a competitive market proceeds to rapidly develop around the throats of stagnant legacy car companies as they continue to dig their heels in with hybrid, hydrogen or hydrocarbons of the past, it's going to be a mess for traditional car companies as they cannot compete with Tesla, the Chinese and a handful of other dedicated EV companies that are leading the way towards cheaper, more compelling, not not forgetting profitable electric cars. Let's take this example of the soon to be released Dacia Spring, an electric car with a modest 137 miles of range for the base version, perfect for a little runabout or a second car perhaps, with a price tag of just £14,995. How on earth are Dacia able to produce this? I wouldn't say no frills because it's got some frilly bits, but a simple, small but spacious brand new EV for that price. It's astonishing when compared to Volkswagen's ID3, their smallest, cheapest EV offering that still starts at £34,820. Could it be that legacy auto companies don't really want to sell EVs to customers as they A. can't make them profitably, B. they'd rather sell you an ICE car instead, C. need to continue robbing customers in the service department for years to come, D. the greater powers that be would rather keep us all addicted to fossil fuels, or could it be all four of those things? Quite possibly. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And it's not just new EVs getting cheaper. The UK second-hand market is full of bargains, with used EV sales up 66% year over year. After a quick look on Auto Trader, I about spat out my coffee at the price of these Tesla Model 3s. £13,800 for a 200 plus mile range, 0 to 60 in 5.6 seconds for this base model. And of course, they are supercharger accessible, regularly over the air updating spaceships. What a bargain! And perhaps now is a good time to mention the safety of these vehicles. Here's my friend Simon's Tesla Model 3 after a very nasty accident which flipped his car and smashed every corner of it. Emergency responders were shocked to find Simon stood by his car with nothing but a scratch on his arm. Most cars would not perform this well in a crash but instead fold up like an accordion. I'm most grateful to Tesla for building the safest four cars ever tested and have even broken many of the machines that test the safety of vehicles. You couldn't make it up, could you? This safety first principle that Tesla has made priority when designing its vehicles has allowed Simon and others to walk away from the most horrific of accidents. 
Quick side note though, Simon who makes these light shows for the Tesla community over on X Light Shows on YouTube and X now has the Tesla logo branded onto his arm and is the only injury from that accident, which he thinks came from the steering wheel's T logo. Recognise what this might be? So I've officially been branded with a Tesla T on my arm. The lengths Simon will go to to get Tesla affiliation is incredible, but seriously, I know you watch Simon, I'm so pleased you're okay. Point being, buy whatever car you jolly well like. A Tesla, a diesel, a massive banana car. All I'm saying is, safety should at least be a factor when considering which vehicle to stick you and your family in. We all know the roads are full of numpties, don't we? Back to second-hand bargains though, here's a Nissan Leaf for just £10,000 with 20,000 miles on the clock. That's 168 miles of range, utter bargain. If you currently spend two and a half grand a year on fuel, maintenance, tax, congestion charge, zones, etc, this could practically pay for itself in savings over just four years. So what is this magical place I mentioned earlier where you can test drive loads of different EVs, pick the brains of experts and peruse an ever-increasing number of sustainable energy products for your home? It all began in 2010 when electric car rallies in the UK looked like this. Not a lot of choice of EVs, and certainly not many folks who believed that they were ready for prime time. But in that very same year, Robert Llewellyn picked up a camera for the first time and started making videos about these crazy newfangled electric cars, and Fully Charged was born. 14 years later, and the Fully Charged YouTube channel has over a million subscribers and coming up to 200 million views. I've got a mountain to climb, haven't I? Clearly, there's an interest though, and an appetite for going electric. Add to that dozens of past live shows around the world and it's pretty clear that Fully Charged is a massive positive force for pushing the world towards a cleaner, sustainable electric future and waking people up to the benefits of switching their car, their home, our planet to a sustainable electrically powered one. Look, I'm obviously a bit of a fan, for if I hadn't have been taxied into that first live show at Silverstone back in 2018 in the front seat of a Tesla Model S, my Tesla addiction might never have become a problem or solution depending on who you ask but it's been wonderful to watch these events grow over the years along with the EV market which now offers over a hundred electric vehicles available to buy today in the UK alone. From that soon to be available £15,000 Dacia Spring Electric car to the ludicrous performance and stylings of a new Tesla Model 3 performance what a time to go electric car shopping and there's no better place for test driving a variety of EVs than at one of these events. The Everything Electric Show, as it's now known, has provided over 100,000 electric vehicle test drives in total. That's a lot of bums in seats experiencing a mind-altering EV for the first time, isn't it? And it is, I think, the best way to persuade family and friends to go electric, rather than tying them down and forcing them to listen to facts, that is. Never works and they struggle like hell with the ropes. Once you drive one, they just make sense. Once you've plugged one into a rapid charger for the first time at the services and had a quick wee, grabbed a coffee and 20 minutes later, you're good to go. Or plug it in at home on a super cheap overnight electricity tariff and wake up every day to a full charge that costs just three quid. They just make sense. Travelling around and noticing new fumes spewing out the back, that makes sense too. But I've finally come to the realisation that no matter how many facts or money saving tips I might share with family and friends, or random strangers at the door to be fair, everyone is going to figure out the obvious better technology of electric cars eventually, just at their own pace. Of course, some people will die alongside their stubborn bad ideas, but many humans are capable of adapting and changing with the environment, you know, when better tech comes along. Like solar panels that capture free energy. Like battery storage systems that store that energy for later use. Like the LED light bulbs that barely use electricity. All these heat pumps from Aera that are three times more efficient with their energy use than that of a traditional gas boiler. All of this super efficient technology is becoming commonplace around the world. Why is that you might ask? Because it can all be powered from clean, renewable energy. One particular section of the Everything Electric show that I love is the home energy advice area, where you can pick the brains of experts about everything from home insulation, heat pumps to all manner of sustainable products for a greener home. Another valuable part of these events are the live discussions with experts, myself included, as I joined panel discussions with Jack Scarlett and Robert Llewellyn on various topics. These live sessions are full of useful, relevant and interesting subjects, from how to persuade stubborn friends and family to go electric, to choosing your first EV. Audience participation is mandatory, with Q&A sessions at the end of each talk. I learn so much every time I sit and listen to any of these sessions, no matter what the topic. But it's the crowd of people everything electric shows attract. 
Everyone you speak to is hungry to learn, progress towards this sustainable future, eager to talk about their journey on their electric adventure and what they are planning next for their home or EV choice. That's the beauty of it. Real people making positive change with their transport and home energy choices. I'd still say somewhat early adopters of this electric revolution. After the success of previous live shows, Fully Charged are aiming for 10 worldwide everything electric shows by the year 2030, coming to a country near you. So if you do get the chance to bring along friends and family to these fun-filled, knowledge-packed festivals of electrification showcasing thousands of electric vehicles of all shapes and sizes, plus the latest clean energy technologies, I'd recommend it. Just don't forget your driving licence for those test drives. But let's get back to that EV myth-busting gift I mentioned earlier. It's crystal clear that some nefarious forces have been at play, spreading misinformation as fast as can be to persuade the general public to perhaps cling on to the 100-year-old technology of burning stuff, to keep those greasy cogs of profitability turning nicely for certain drilly-type companies. And as much as I and others have been trying to bat away these blatant lies about EVs being responsible for all the potholes, collapsing car parks and bridges, and that for the majority of an EV's life it will be on fire, Little channels like mine aren't going to get the necessary reach to change public opinion, but I know someone that does have that clout. If you don't know this guy, he's Quentin Wilson. He presented Top Gear back in the day when it was actually about reviewing cars, and is now one of the fighting voices for reason and common sense about all things electric. His company Fair Charge is campaigning for fair prices for public chargers. He wants the government to lower the VAT on public charging from 20% to 5% making it the same VAT rate for those homeowners who have the privilege of charging from their driveway. He also runs the campaign Stop Burning Stuff, in collaboration with The Fully Charged Show, which is on a mission to address misinformation and stop the fear, uncertainty and doubt that is stalling the transition to cleaner transport, energy and technology solutions. And here is my gift on to you, not that it's my gift to give, but consider me a good middleman. This is the little book of EV myths, and is the equivalent of kryptonite to Superman if Superman was the baddie, or maybe garlic to a vampire. I don't know where I'm going with these analogies. I'll stop there. This book, which is free for you to download in the description below, debunks nonsense like EV batteries won't last and hydrogen will replace EVs. It's a brilliant little pocket guide to read and retain for those occasions where people are spouting negative nonsense about electric cars. But you can bat them away, either physically with a hard copy of this book, or better still, calmly and rationally respond to their claims with facts. The more people who know the truth about electric cars, sustainable energy, and the improved future that brings, the better. I urge you, read this book, memorise it if your brain's more capable than mine, have the facts at the end of your faculties to put out the fires of nonsense we hear every day thanks to mainstream media misinformation and other pillocks on YouTube doing their best to cling on to their dead horse of a vehicle by condemning EVs. Arm yourself with facts, so that the next time someone tells you that EV's bad, the oil industry told me so, you'll have a devastating blow of a response ready. Or perhaps you're just someone who's quietly considering purchasing an EV for the first time, but has slowly realised that we've all been lied to about the negatives of electric vehicles. Let's stomp out this ridiculousness together. Who's with me? Woo! Maybe just leave a like instead if you want to, you know, contribute somehow. So is the time right to change to an EV? Absolutely. Here's my advice for what it's worth. Find your nearest everything electric show and get it in the diary. Invite those around you that might be interested too. Download a copy of the Little Book of EV Myths and continue forth on your journey to wherever it is you want to go. If you want to support my work here, like the legend you are, take a look at my Patreon page for extra content, Q&As, meetups and more. What a win-win for both of us. Thanks so much to those that have already. And you might like one of these videos next. Two interviews with two extraordinary electric car owners. Check it out. I'm Will. This is the Tesla Jigsaw. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.